I bought this Coleman Versa trailer this year and I knew it needed some fixing up. Some, you know, paint's missing, uh, rusted, tail light broken, the other one didn't work. The wheels needed a lot of attention, a lot of cleaning going on here. And the bed wasn't in too bad a shape, but needed painting. Let's see how old it is. June 14th, 1978. Let's see. If you do the math on that, that makes it uh, 46 years old. The best part is that all the parts are here. Everything's there, just needs repainting, cleaning up. And this is what the wheels look like before I start. And that's the best one right there. So I gotta break the bead on all this and push it down. I'm not gonna take it off. And then I tape up under the edge so we can get a good you know a good paint up here around the edges and it takes a good clamp to pull this down and get it broke loose one wheel that I've already uh, prepped and repainted yeah I got some marks on it though ah uh, pooty I taped up the whole tire it just seemed easier than trying to mask around it of course you have to do both sides this is a breakdown trailer, so I used the tongue on it to hold it up while I could get underneath it and do some work. I serviced the axle bearings, repacked everything with grease, set it to my specifications. Hope that's going to work out. I pressure washed to get rid of all the bugs and varmints under there. Started cleaning and fixing. Uh, there was just a lot to do. A lot of missing paint underneath there. A lot of rust showing. I sanded down the side panels and got them ready to be painted. Of course you always get some measurements from your decals before you start taking them off. It makes ordering a whole lot easier. I sanded and painted the tailgates. The pollen and wind was becoming a factor here. I wasn't sure what I was going to do about that. I sanded down the fenders, gave them a good coat of primer, and then painted them up. Let's talk a little bit about this paint. I don't like it. It takes way too long to dry and it chips off really easy. Flat black worked out well for the undercarriage. Everything that got sanded down to the metal got some fresh primer put on it and then they got smoothed down as well. Remember every piece that comes off has to be sanded, primed, and then painted. The axles, everything was cleaned and degreased. The side panels were the easiest. I think it was this paint. It worked out really well. It goes on quick and easy and dries in about 20 minutes. The pollen in the wind was really being a problem, so I set up a small shade structure to help deflect some of that pollen from getting all over everything. It really caused a problem. I decided to paint the lug bolts. Uh, see what you think. Notice the R and the L on the bolts. That's an interesting concept. Remember right? Remember righty tighty lefty loosey. Goes to the right. Left hand threaded bolts to go in, it's to the left. See, it goes this way to tighten. It's just weird. So you switch it. Whee! Now it's enough of that. I draped the canopy with some old tarps just to help out with all that pollen and wind. Started getting better results with my paint. Wind, pollen, and paint are not the best of friends. The tires were turning out okay. You have to do both sides, you know, and keep painting until you get it right. The pollen was horrible. Sometimes you couldn't tell what you had painted, not painted. It just kept coming. It just looked ugly all the time. I started reassembling the trailer. 
Remember to tie off your wiring so it won't fall back through the holes. It might be hard to fish through. I started working on the top. After removing all the hardware, you could clearly see the paint was a lot different originally than what it looked like now. Inside or outside, that same color kept showing up no matter where the hardware came from. So I started trying to figure out a way to clean it up really well. There was a lot of adhesive everywhere left over from camper seal weather stripping that had been placed around the top. <laughs> After a lot of cleaning, I decided I'd try to match this paint to an original color inside and out. It looked like I got pretty close to it. Then I had to deal with this chipped corner on the top. Now I had a part of that that I could put back in and then I was going to have to fill this gap up. Always take pictures of your hardware before you disassemble it. It will really help in the future. You can see some of the brown paint somebody tried to touch it up with earlier. I installed a reinforcing bar. I just felt like it needed it to make the top stronger. Used a piece on the lift handle to flatten that out and give it more reinforcement as well. The hardware came out okay and went back on just fine. I went ahead and added some uh, welting to the edges to help make it stronger. And of course every trailer needs a trailer jack. That just really completes it and makes it easier to use. I cut an old piece of foam rubber and put that on there just to give it some padding. And then a piece of outdoor carpet to make it look right. And of course some spot painting to fix some areas that I damaged. I added a battery pack to run the interior lighting that I'd installed. Use the controls for it. There was a lot of touch up painting left to do. It was kind of all over the place. After handling the pieces they get a little dirty and a little scratch so you have to go back and touch those up. I'll let you just take a look at a few of them. It was a lot. It was nice to know I was getting closer to finishing this project up. Here's a couple of holes that needed filling. There it goes. One of the best parts was putting on those new decals. I was happy to find these new Coleman plaques to install. I think it really looks nice. I added some new hardware. 245 each. Because the trailer is so small, I needed to add some lighted trailer guides so I could see it behind the car. And I added some, some lights. And some demo ones up here at the front, a couple of bays. See? Since there were no strut supports left, and no, no place to hook them, I added a couple of gas struts to the mix. And it stays down all by itself. And I've never put in gas struts before. So I'm going to consider this kind of a win. Give it a little boost. One of the things about gas struts, I learned that if you put them in, you should put this cylinder, the big cylinder, should go 
No, you can't see nothing in there. There you go. The cylinder should go to the top. See, I've added this uh, support brace in here, so it's hooked through this aluminum bracket. And because all the oil will be down at this end, and that's going to keep this lubed and the seal lubricated. But it's going to keep this rod lubed. And lo and behold, I've got a trailer with a self opening top on it. I'll show you what I got. I think that's about as good as I could hope for. You always wonder. Did I get this masking tape right? I hope you enjoyed that and maybe picked up a few tips on your Restore project. Like and subscribe if you can, and leave a comment. It's a wild world, so get out there, and thanks for watching.